Come here. And welcome back to Meeting of the Minds. I'm Gene Zanetti. You are coast to coast mindset coach, and you got the other Gene Zanetti, your future coast to coast mindset coach. You got to learn sometime, right, pal? Why not now? Our boy. Mm -hmm. There he is. Yep. We got the present and the future right here of Gene Zanetti's. And my dad, who's usually on this call, so there'll be three Gene Zanetti's on the call. And my grandpa, Poppy, um, Korean War veteran, you remember him, um, God willing in heaven, right now looking down on us, um, him too. All, you know, all four genes on the squall, very least, in spirit. Oh. Okay. All right. Okay, coach. Coach, how's it going? Hey, what's going on? How you doing? Good to see you. Hey, we got the little guy with me. Yeah, mine are my two boys are downstairs with my wife right now. They're they're not so little anymore. <laughs> yeah, uh, this guy sometimes he's running around crazy. So I figured, hey, you might as well be on the call. Yeah. So how's everything? How's everything going with you? Uh, it's going good. It's going good. I mean, we're we're kind of getting back in the swing of things at the academy. Um, good. Obviously, with some stipulations in place, but it's good. We're making progress and moving forward. So that's always exciting. Excellent. Excellent. What are the athletes doing at this time? So our cadets, with the July weekend, hopefully staying safe. Yeah, our cadets are so they're starting to come back in phases, and some of them. So like our our first years, our seniors, they've already came back and they've left, and they're going on a summer assignment. Um, and so they did like a I guess a quarantine for a couple of weeks, got tested for COVID nineteen multiple times, and then got sent back out or sent into to uh, their assignment. And then now our freshmen. And the ones that would be like our cadres, so it would be like our rising sophomores, or I guess are going to be our juniors now. They will be cadre for the summer, which basically kind of means they're in charge of boot camp. Okay. So they're doing their – they will stay on campus, and then our freshmen will go off on assignment pretty soon. Okay. So they're staying busy. Yeah, they, their busy – or their summer is full. Uh, they, get, they usually get about three weeks leave every summer, and then the rest of it they're doing something for the Coast Guard. That's great. Yeah, they're no joke. So how do um how do athletes how do athletes come to you? How do um like how what's the process for applying? I'd assume it's probably similar to any of all the other academies, right? Probably the same. Yeah. So so there's different different ways to get in touch with with uh you know prospective student athletes and attending tournaments like big tournaments like Super Thirty Two and High School Nationals. So we attend those and those are ways that so we either. I mean, grades are a big component, so it's always nice at those events as they provide you with a list of student athletes, right? And they provide yeah. you a list of student athletes that put their grades, or the ones that do put their grades, um, on their when they when they uh, I guess register for the tournament, they put their grades down, and so we already kind of know, you know, where like we can cut off some of the list at that point, you know, who's who's who can get into the academy and, and who's going to struggle to get in. Yeah, um, and, do and they then. Go ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. No, go. Yeah, so I was going to say, you know, just people emailing us, people know that they, they really have a passion, they want to serve, um, but they also want to wrestle. And so they contact us by email. They fill out a recruiting career questionnaire on our website, and um, we get emails from coaches. And so there's a lot of different different ways that people get in contact with, with us. All right. All right. I guess you, you need the, a letter from the senator, right? Is that right? Or you need two senators or so something like that? At the Coast Guard – academy you do not need a congressional nomination like the other academies so okay. it'll be it'll be 100 percent off your merit like basically like your grades leadership ability um obviously being good at, at a sport can help as well but yeah the other okay. ones like navy army air force they would need a congressional nomination which okay. is a, which is a which is a process but okay and what type of people tend to be attracted to uh, to the coast guards uh we have a lot of uh, a lot of engineering majors, and so a lot of people that want to want to be engineers uh, come to the academy. People that have lo uh, long lines of, you know, just kind of like just service to the country that have been, their families have been in the military, uh, and then we but we also have people that just their family has never been in the military and they just want to do it. Like it's just it's exciting for them. They want to, you know, we have people that come from all over the country. They're just like, man, I want to do something. I don't want to go to civilian school. I just want to do something 
you know, just that they feel is more interesting. And I kind of, I kind of view it as the academy is like an academic institution. So like when you're at the academy, you are a student athlete, you are going to school, you're wrestling, uh, you're practicing. When the summer hits, you're, it's like a trade school. So like if you're going to be a welder, right, you're going to go to trade school and you would learn to weld. And at the academy, though, they're going out in their, on their summer assignments and learning to be in the Coast Guard. And so I think that's pretty cool. Like when I was in when I was in college and stuff, I was like working construction and pouring cement and stuff in the summers. Yeah. And these guys are going off doing what they're going to be doing, like which had nothing to do with what I was what I was majoring in. And these guys are going off and doing hey, what they're gonna, doing yeah. what they're going to be doing, right? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm sorry, the current situation right here. <laughs> that's all right. There you go. Just tearing down the lamp. Get over here. Get over. Come on, man. What's his, what's his name? Gene, like me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gene, 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 yeah. All right, so, so talk about your, your philosophies as a coach, some of your principles, and also some of the Coast Guard principles. Oh, yeah, asking what mine are? Yeah. Yeah, so, the, so I got at the academy about six years ago, so this is just finished up my sixth season. And I guess kind of going through the hiring process and everything, I actually – so I grew up in Iowa and did not know the Coast Guard Academy existed originally. And I actually didn't, I didn't even know. So I wrestled at Warford College and there was a, a wrestler that made the, from the Academy that made the national finals twice, the weight class above me. Um, yeah. Chris Ferdig, he's a Pennsylvania guy. And, but I don't recall him. Like, I just don't remember him. And I don't know if it's just cause I was wrestling at the same time and just kind of focusing on my own weight and my own situation. But I just, don't, I don't even recall him like, wrestling in the finals twice and he was only the weight, you know he's the weight above me so you'd think i don't know, maybe i'm coming off and he's getting on i don't know but um so i didn't really know about the academy until i was at north central college and i had a wrestler nathan fitzner I made, made this uh, national semifinals and wrestled nate giorgio uh from the coast guard academy and nate nate was a freshman so both nates but nate giorgio was a freshman at the time yeah. and he placed fourth yeah. that and i was like you know he was he was like oh. Yeah. And so then I get to the academy when Nate George was a senior. And so because of him, I knew what the academy was, went through the whole hiring process and everything, and then got hired. And, and so then I coached Nate. So I coached against him in the national semifinals when he was a freshman. And then yeah. I coached him at the national tournament when he was a senior. Uh, so I, I thought that was pretty cool. But just going through that hiring process, I, I really looked into the academy. I mean, and just the, the core values and the mission of the academy and all that stuff just really – um, just, you know, really, uh, oh, man. <laughs> Come on. Just one second. Go ahead. Mission to Academy. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, no problem. No problem. I have, I have two boys, so I know it's like they're, they're everywhere. Nuts. Yeah. It just struck a chord with me. And I just, I was like, man, you know, how cool would it be to be part of, you know, the Coast Guard Academy and, and obviously lead the, the wrestling team, but knowing that you're also part of something bigger than yourself, that you're not only right. training, you're not only training them to be great wrestlers, but you're training that. I guess I should have put my headphones in, but can you hear me pretty well? Yep. And so – You're good. You're good. You're fine. But but also being you – know, training them to be officers. So I teach classes there, and I get to work with not just wrestlers, but I get to work with other cadets as well. And so I just – I was like, man, that is such an awesome opportunity to be able to do that. And and then, yeah. they, and then they go out, and they're – you know, we're a humanitarian um, – service and we're the part of the department of homeland security and and we're out saving lives and and you know and that which i think is really cool you know protecting borders protecting absolutely. lots of things so it's absolutely now and with the fourth of july coming up tomorrow and and at, and at all times thank you for you know your right. service all that all that all of you yeah, do it's it's just such a big deal all the academies it's 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 just a great thing like you said about living for something bigger than ourselves and sometimes in a sport like wrestling, I feel like we could sometimes get – we turn inward. It goes the other way. It's, it's about us. And we think, like, all oh, empowering, oh, life is all about us. But, like, ho-hum. So it's all about you. There's nothing greater than that. That's, that's the extent of the world, your world. Ho-hum, right. right? Like, the fact that there actually is something that's much bigger than us, and especially now with all the, you know right. – garbage right. we're going through it's like yeah i mean it's so important, important. You know, at, at times it's like how important is wrestling when those things are going on not very important right 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 exactly exactly no that's that that's great stuff so what's what's the general breakdown of where your athletes are from i'm sure we're all across the country <laughs> they yeah they are from all across the country we and we just we have new york wrestlers uh, aj Averly was from new york he just graduated as an all-american for us patrick Irwin is yeah. from 
Sacramento, California. Um, he was he was an All American and couple time national qualifier for us. He ranged from New Jersey, Pennsylvania. I would say, yeah, I think I think anywhere where there's water is where yeah. a lot of our or where there's a, sense. Lar a large uh, military presence. Makes sense. That is where the most kids come from because they see it every day. You know, like, like like somebody in Hawaii. I've had kids on my team from Hawaii, and they see the Coast Guard every day. You know, kids in Florida that live on the coast, they see the Coast Guard every day. I grew up in Iowa, and I never saw the Coast Guard. So I, that's right. That's you don't right. think about that. You don't think about it until – but I came here from Illinois, and Illinois has a, has a decent um, presence here at the academy as well, maybe just due to population. But, um, yeah. you know, they – we have a, a few kids that, that have been from Illinois on our team and are constantly recruiting yeah. that state. But, uh, you know, some of it comes on the, with us, I guess, just the strength of the, the student athlete, the strength of the state in terms of wrestling, you know, targeting certain areas. Yeah. But the, but the academy has its own, our admissions has its own initiatives as well, right? So they want geodiversity. They want, you know, diversity of all kinds, and, and that's important. So we've, we've yeah. actually had a lot of kids come from Arizona, which you wouldn't think. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. yeah. But that's but you know like you said as far as like building leaders and especially now in a time where how how important is it for us to be to be able to sustain ourselves and I think about it a lot like myself a lot of my friends we came out you know even from Ivy League schools and it's like you know what did we really know how to do in life okay like right. might might have been good taking tests might have been good students you might be able to get a job but like right. can you do can you do basic things you know like most of my most of my classmates have probably never fired a gun in their life. That's kind of important right. just in case, right. like now yeah. with this whole, not to get political, but the whole Marxist revolution going on, it's like that guns are pretty important. Um, now you got the whole, um, it's just, it's just nuts. Like, what do, what do we really do? It's like not, not really knowing how to take care of things. And you really want people who are leaders. I was thinking about that yesterday, about how, how much of an advantage, I feel, or maybe it was two days ago, the advantage of these people that are coming from Coast Guards, Navy, Army, Air Force, everything, Merchant Marines, every, all, yeah. all the, you know, everywhere. How much of an advantage that is. It's great. Yeah, they they grow up fast, that's for sure. I mean, when you get sent to a seven-week boot camp and you're kind of thrown into <laughs> it, like, you got to grow up fast and learn to take care of yourself. And and, and they're, they're just – they get taught to be leaders. And, and, and in the beginning, you know, they're taught to be followers. That's kind of what boot camp's about is learning, right. being able to, to be able to listen and, and follow instructions. And but and then as they progress, you know, then they, then they develop leadership and they become leaders and yeah. they're in charge of the people in boot camp and then they become seniors and then they're going to be officers in the Coast Guard. They're going to go yeah. when they're an officer on a, on a boat or a cutter, like they're in charge of, of people. Like, yeah. and, 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 it, and it matters like lives, you know, lives right. are at stake at that, right. at that point in time. Right. And sometimes it could be somebody that's, you know, 15, already 15 years into their career and you're 22, 23 years old, just graduated fresh out of an academy and you're going to be, you, you could be in charge of them. You know, you got to be a real lead and relate to a lot of different people, not just other other twenty young, you know, young twenty year olds. That's right. And with just such a misunderstanding of authority and what it is, I think I've heard some kind of quote that if you don't know how to obey, you'll never be able to lead other people. Like if you right. don't know how to take orders, you'll never be able to give orders. And right. and with our with our whole confused mentality of like we said, what authority is and and how important that is and how that structure protects us. It's just so it's just so big. It's a huge deal. Yeah, it's it's a great opportunity. You know, you're not only to just to build, you know, themselves, their character and um, themselves personally, but but professionally as well. And you know, the connections and the networking that they have. There's just I mean, there's just so many opportunities. Right. You can go on and on about it. So it's it's a cool experience. I mean, it's tough. I'm not gonna lie, it's tough. It gets tough. Yeah. Like it's yeah. You know, going through that, but it's well worth it. I mean, they're just it's like they come they come in young uh boys and girls and they leave you know men and women right right makes a lot of sense and that's only Excellent. a matter of a couple yeah. of years like they they grow right up tremendously oh yeah oh i believe it i believe it that's that's got to be great to witness to actually watch that development and the maturity like you said it happens it happens quick but then when you look at it over the period of four years you're like wow it's like these are these are gentlemen and ladies whereas they came in basically as boys and girls yeah you got i mean you got a guy we got this you know, guy comes in he He's a boy. He's kind of a knucklehead as a freshman. You're just like, what are you doing? And then now, now he graduates and he's going to flight school. Like he's gonna be going. He's gonna go fly helicopters in the Coast Guard. So I mean, just... <laughs> that's unbelievable. That's awesome stuff. Oh, great. So how, how do we send more people your way? Social media pages, websites, everything. Yeah. So I'm on our social media right now. So Instagram is probably the biggest one that we use, but it does go to Facebook. But CGA underscore wrestling. 
Um, you can go to our the Coast Guard Academy sports site, and we have a questionnaire that's on there. Uh, the biggest thing is you know, people getting good grades, and, and that's where we start 100%. We're looking at, at grades, and if you have the grades, then we're looking at wrestling ability, character, what type of leadership you have, and just having a culture is a good culture is so important to us that we want to bring the right people in and the right people that fit right. that culture. Right. As opposed to trying to fit maybe a square peg into a round hole. It's like, this right. isn't like we said before, you know, this is what you are. This is, this is what you're at. These are, these are the values. If you don't like right. that, go leave. Right. And it's nothing right. personal. That lifestyle is not for everyone, but you really should consider all the benefits that it's going to give you down right. the road. And, and, and do you take maybe the four years of partying and living it up at now the expense of where, well, now you're, you're not really self-sufficient. You're not independent. You're not a leader. You've, right. you've learned basically no real life skills. I mean, hopefully you do, <laughs> but worst case scenario, you haven't. And at least here, I feel like you go, you go, you go to Coast Guard, forget it. Like you're going to, you're going to come out, you're going to be knowing skills. So yep. that's a big deal. That's a big deal. Oh, awesome. Thank you very much for joining us. I, I appreciate it. And like yeah, I said, no any way I could, any way we could help send more people your way, your links, we could, when we put this up on YouTube, okay. we'll throw them in the show notes. Awesome. So just let us know. Awesome. We're happy to help. Awesome. All right. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Take care. Have a great 4th of July. Thanks. Thank you. You too. All right. Bye. Bye.